Previously on Airway Cops. He was so anterior. That's no excuse. He was obese. They got something for that. All I needed was some laryngeal manipulation. Should have been me, not him. You know that ain't true, Mac. Damn it, Mac! You know how much your little spree just cost the city? I've been on the phone with the mayor for over an hour trying to convince him that you two were actually doing your jobs out there. Chief, you want my badge? Here's my badge. You want my laryngoscope? Here's my laryngoscope. What I want is for you to stop lugging around this death wish that you got and start acting like a good airway cop just for once. Mac, get your ass back in here. I'm not finished with you yet. Francis, get out there and try to talk some sense into him. Maybe he is a lunatic airway cop. But he's the lunatic airway cop this city needs. And it's not Francis. It's Miller. Hi, I'm Mark for ACLS Certification Institute, and that would have been a great show if it hadn't been canceled immediately after the trailer. Today's topic, advanced airway management. Now, years ago, I was assisting with an intubation up on the floor, and the doctor looked at me uh, during the intubation, and he put down his sandwich, and he said, Mark, what's more important? Is it the person holding the football or the person kicking the football? And I'm sure I just gave him a dumb look in return. And he said, it's the guy holding the football. Now, the guy kicking the football gets all the glory, but it's the person holding the football that really makes that ball go through the goalpost. And when we're talking about airway management, it's the same thing. Who's holding the football? Who's preparing the gear? In your crash cart, do you have to have exactly six number three CC syringes and door two to save somebody's life? Probably not. Should it be there? Absolutely. Should you check it? Of course. Uh, don't have the right blade to match the handle in an airway kit and things will go south real quick. But if there's one piece of equipment you have got to check in the morning, whether it's in your ambulance or your crash cart, that's your airway supplies and that's part of holding the football. Now, if you're a paramedic in the back of an ambulance, uh, most all the other paramedics intubate. That's what paramedics do. We're trained in intubation. If you're a nurse in the ER, you may not necessarily intubate. So your job is really holding the football and preparing it for whoever's going to be doing that airway management, whoever's going to be intubating. And that is critical, making sure that gear is checked and everything's ready to go prior to intubating that patient. So let's start at the beginning, the endotracheal tube. Notice it comes in a package to keep it clean and protected before it goes in the patient. When you're checking the tube, keep it in the package. You don't have to take it out and start whipping it around like Zorro, getting it all contaminated. Keep it in the package. Open up the cuff, or the, uh, the end that's going to attach uh, to the Amboo bag. Leave the cuff end, the part that's going into the patient, leave that clean for now, keep that protected. And I can get to all the parts I need to check it. I have my pilot tube here, so I can check my cuff. Take my 10cc syringe, inflate the cuff, check that, check the integrity, good. And as I'm feeling here, keep your hand on the pilot tube, you should feel the air go back and forth, that's how you know you have good integrity. I can deflate my cuff. Next I can put in my stylet. Now, when putting in a stylet, just remember not to extend the tip of the stylet 
past the end of the endotracheal tube. Most intubations that you're gonna do in an ambulance or in the ER are crash intubations. Um, have a stylet in there, especially in the back of an ambulance, because if you need it, you have it. If you don't have it and you're flopping around in the back of the airway, it's too late, you gotta stop, then put a stylet in. So I always like to have a stylet in before I intubate. Measure it, make sure the end doesn't go past the end of the endotracheal tube. You could do this in the package. Then kink off the end so it stays in place. Now, when I'm inserting my tube, I like a little lubricant on it. It slides in a little easier. It doesn't get hung up on the back of the airway. So I might take it out, put a little bit of surgery lube on the end, just on the tip, and then it goes right back into the package. And this is where it stays until it goes into the patient. So let's take a look at the laryngoscope. This is the primary tool we use for advanced airway management for placing the endotracheal tube in the patient. Make sure you check your equipment before you use it. Make sure that the bulb, when locked in, is activated and bright. You need to have a good view at the back of that airway, so you're gonna need a bright light so you can visualize the vocal cords to place that endotracheal tube. A couple of different kind of blades we use. This is a Macintosh blade, a curved blade. And I remember the Macintosh because if you look at it from the side, it kind of looks like the side of an apple. That's a Macintosh blade. Probably the most preferred, most used blade. Now this blade, when inserted into the airway, is designed to go into the vollecula, which is the space above the epiglottis, lifting straight up. And we lift the epiglottis upward, exposing the vocal cords so we can put the tube in. So it doesn't go under the epiglottis, it goes on top of it, into that space known as the vollecula, and we lift up. Now a straight blade, or a Miller blade, which I just happen to have in my pocket here, is different. It does not go into the vollecula. The straight blade is inserted into the oral cavity and it goes underneath the epiglottis and we're directly lifting the epiglottis out of the way so we can view the vocal cords and insert the endotracheal tube. So, if you're assisting with the intubation, if they ask for a Mac, they're looking for that curved blade. They might say Miller, they're looking for that straight blade. Most folks, uh, in my experience, are Macintosh users. However, there may be certain circumstances where a Mac blade's not gonna work. And if it doesn't work, be prepared to switch blades. Have several different blades and several different sizes available before you start your intubation. Let's talk for a minute about maintaining and assessing that airway after the patient's been intubated. Let's say you finished working in a rest, you got a pulse back, you do a 12 lead, and we're going to the cath lab. So we're wheeling down to the cath lab, and on the way, the patient begins to become harder to bag. They're getting harder to bag, their sats are dropping, something's wrong. Remember the acronym DOPE, D-O-P-E, D. -O -P -E. D displaced tube. Your endotracheal tube popped out. I cannot emphasize enough the importance of securing that endotracheal tube. Now the AHA for a while was on a big kick on using uh, commercially prepared devices for holding and maintaining the endotracheal tube in place. My experience, a good respiratory therapist, an experienced respiratory therapist, and a good taping job, beautiful. I ha I've had tubes you could swing from trees on this thing. That tube's not moving. However, a lot of the commercially prepared devices also incorporated a bite block, so it would prevent the patient from biting down on the endotracheal tube. Either way, make sure that tube is secure to the patient before you start to move them. Whenever you're moving the patient, say from a bed to a cot, disconnect them off the ventilator. Remove the bag, move the patient over, then reconnect them. This will avoid unnecessary tension on the tube and possibly extubating the patient. Another great method for assessing breath-by-breath -breath status is inline and tidal CO2 monitoring. This gives you a lifetime real feedback of this patient's ventilatory status. So if the tube pops out or something goes south, you know it immediately. If I'm transporting a patient on a ventilator, they have end tidal inline and I'm monitoring it throughout the transport. Oh, obstructed tube. Your patient just threw a lung biscuit into the endotracheal tube. This is where having a ballard suction is very handy, especially during transport of ventilated patients. This allows you to cleanly uh, 
provides suction down the endotracheal tube without contaminating the site. The Ballard suction is in line, it's ready to go the whole time. If I'm doing a vent transport, especially with trach patients, make sure you have a Ballard suction in line on your patient before you start to move. P, pneumothorax. Do they happen? Absolutely. One of the last flights I had in my helicopter, just before we were taking off, the high pressure alarm went off on the ventilator in the ER. I tried to bag him and I got a brick. I can't get air into this patient. We ended up having to do an emergent needle decompression to relieve that tension pneumothorax, which means I had to pull that needle out of my pocket, which means I had to have the needle in my pocket to begin with. If I'm on duty, I have two 14 gauge longs in my pocket ready to go at all times because pneumothorax happen and they happen at the most inopportune time. Be prepared for that. E, probably one of the most common events is equipment failure. You're bagging the patient, suddenly their sats are starting to drop. You're out of oxygen. Your tank just went dry. Again, check your equipment. Now Einstein said, what's right is what's left after you've done everything else wrong. What he was really talking about was advanced airway management and have a backup plan. Have a plan B when things go south. Thanks for watching part one of advanced airway management. Now in part two, we're gonna cover some of the plan B stuff, some of the options, some of the tools we have in our back pocket to take care of that airway if our first attempt doesn't work. I'm Mark for ACLS Certification Institute, the leader in online ACLS certification. We'll see you in part two. I want you to stop lugging around this death wish that you're carrying around with you and start acting like the good airway cop that you're supposed to be, just for once. Cut. Uh -oh. Chief, you want my badge? Here's my badge. You want my laryngoscope? Here's my laryngoscope. No, Mac. I want you to quit lugging this death wish around and... Uh, well, yeah, I was gonna say, right, say that's that's like, I was on, I was on fire. Oh, where am I looking at? I'm looking at that one. Yeah.